Hey guys, I just wanted to talk to you a little bit about getting started on your color study paintings. So we are gonna make our color studies paintings so that they're based on a memory um, or inspired by a memory. So you might kind of be thinking like, what? <laughs> what does that mean? How do I do that? So the way that I approach it as an artist is I actually like to kind of keep a collection of my own source material and inspiration material. And the way that I do that, it's so simple, you guys, is I just take photos. So if I scroll back through my photos on my phone, um, that triggers memories for me in a good way. <laughs> um, because you can kind of like go back and see, okay, where have I been over the last year or so. Another way you can do this is going through like your social media, um, scrolling through your Instagram. It'll provide you with some different jumping off points. So I did that. I went through my Instagram and I kind of pulled three photos um, and I'll show you what I have. These are my like top three picks for what I might want to make a color study that's inspired by. Now these are really pretty pictures but when I paint them they're not gonna look like the picture. Uh, I'm just taking inspiration like from the feeling um, and then from the colors but I'm not gonna be making them like a realistic painting if that makes sense. Um, so the first picture I have is actually of my dog Scooter, um, and this was on a hike. I think it was called, ooh, it's like a really steep hike. It's in Bellingham. I think it's called Cedar Lake. Um, so this was a hike that we went on in the summer, and he walked out on a log, and he's just like looking into the water. It was just me and him, um, and it was a really cool hike to go on. Now the reason this is one of my top contenders is I like the variety of colors in this photo, we have like kind of some deep blues, um, some very like earthy greens and browns, and then we have like that electric lime green in the top corner. Uh, and I like the way that when I look at the water in this photo, it already looks very painterly. You know what I mean? Like it's like little stripes of color, so it already looks like it looks like brush strokes to me already. So I think that this could be a really interesting one uh, to go ahead and paint in an abstract way. So that's one of my top picks. Um, the next one that I'm gonna show you, oh, this is a really good memory. Um, this is me and my wedding party, uh, all in the Puget Sound in, on Camino Island. And this is the evening um, after my husband and I had just got married. So our whole wedding party, like our bridesmaids and groomsmen, um, we all went and jumped in the water and we were just having an awesome time. So that's a pretty fond memory. It was cool. It was like all the guests had gone home um, and we were just keeping the party going out in the water. So this has a much more limited color palette compared to the first picture of Scooter. Um, if I was going to make this painting, it's going to be a lot of blue tones, some gray, some black, way more limited. So if that's something that it seems interesting to me. Um, that might be a determining factor. I do love color though, so maybe this isn't as appealing to me um, as the first image in terms of making a painting. I do really like this memory, but in terms of color, it's not speaking to me as much. And then the third option, well, this is a good memory as well. Um, this is a picture from, gosh, this would have been maybe like three years ago. Uh, this was a camping trip that my husband, myself, and my best friend went on. And we went on this trip because my best friend was moving to Portland. Um, so it was kind of like our last, our last hurrah, the three of us together. So this was up by the like Mount Baker wilderness. Um, we had driven up to the top of this mountain in this tiny, <laughs> tiny little car. I think in a Honda Civic, and it, I was freaking out because the mountainside was so steep. Um, it was freaking me out, so I got out of the car and I was like, I'm just gonna look at these wildflowers. So that's when I took this picture. This can be a really interesting one because um, I like how there's so much like vertical movement in those purple wildflowers. I feel like that could be a really interesting thing to paint. Also, that purple is just like a really striking color when it's set against those dark evergreen trees that are in the foreground. I feel like I could really vibe with that. 
So I'm just trying to talk you through sort of the decision making process of like, how do I find source inspiration? And then once I find source inspiration, how do I work with it? I think I'm going to kick out uh, the swimming photo and I'm just going to compare between the picture of Scooter and the picture of these wildflowers. And I'm going to try to determine what do I think is a better fit for me. I think if I did the photo of the wildflowers, I can have a lot of texture happening in the foreground. That means the front of the image. And I feel like in terms of like brush strokes and using texture and painting techniques, that could look really interesting. Uh, compared to this photo of Scooter, it doesn't have as many like layers. Like we don't see foreground, background, and middle quite as much. It's mostly just water. Ooh, this is such a tough choice. I think just because I'm like vibing with all the textures in these wildflowers, I think that's the one I'm gonna pick you guys. I think this is gonna be my jumping off point. So that's what I'm gonna pick as my source material for my uh, color study based on a memory. This is gonna be my source material. So that means I'm gonna keep it open. Since it's a digital file, I'm just gonna have my laptop open as I paint. That way I can reference the colors um, as I go. But if you have like a physical photo that is printed out, um, you could have that with you like taped up on your wall or just on your desk next to you as you paint. But you'll want to have your source material that way you can color.